anything we talk about on this podcast is for your knowledge, for you to obtain knowledge in your own mental health, for you to seek the appropriate help if you're going through any of these things. This is not information that I'm not diagnosing anyone, but I hope that the conversation opens up to where, again, we can all seek to improve our own mental health. Topic for today, Anger 101. Now, I will, I will lie to you if I say that I've never been angry. I think all of us can think of times where we've been angry about something, whether it be we're out and we order food and somebody messes up our food. Or for us who are parents, if children do something, somebody may spill something or a sibling may hit another sibling and we can go on and on about the things in this world that can make us angry. Now, in, in small amounts, anger is not a bad thing. Sometimes anger promotes us to do something. If we are unsatisfied with something, if we, are, if we cause, an, cause a protest, or if we stand up and say, well, hey, I won't stand for certain things, and I want to make a change. That, sometimes that's what anger does for us. Anger gets us to that point where we can decide that, hey, I want to do something better. I want to change things. But there is a point where anger can get us to a, to a position where we don't want to be. I liken it to what we see in the Bible. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 26 is a, is a verse that speaks very, very into it about anger and how we should be or how we should not be. He says, be angry and sin not. So there's nothing wrong with us expressing that we're angry. But when our anger takes us to a point where we commit sin, Ephesians 4 and verse 26, then we have a problem. You know, the goal of this podcast is for us is for those who profess to be the same faith of the Christian background, and also for those who may not share our religious views, but I want us to be in tune with ourselves and learn more about anger. So again, how do I differentiate or how do I get to the point of saying that my anger has become a problem? Well, I have a few things today that I want to discuss when it comes to our anger. When we have gotten ourselves to a point where anger or because of our anger, we can't sleep, we can't eat, or we seek to be vengeful when it comes to something that somebody has done to us. That's a very big problem. There's a quote that I took, and anybody knows me in my therapy practice, I, I like to look at certain resources. One of the biggest resources I like to use is called Therapist, therapist Notes. No, I'm, I'm sorry, Therapist Aid, not Therapist Notes. That's a second, that's a second one, but TherapistAid.com gives a lot of good information if you are a parent who's seeking to, to get different parenting skills or if you're just a person who wants to increase in your mental health behavior. You know what? You can find a lot of good things there. But this is not a plug for therapist aid. This is just something for me to put out there for you all to, to get extra resources. Now, I, I did take this quote, and I want to make sure I read it directly. It says, in small doses, anger is appropriate. Normal and healthy emotions. Everyone experiences anger. It helps us to stand up for ourselves when we become or have been wronged and protect our needs. However, in many circumstances, anger can have negative repercussions. Now, I want you to focus on that last part that anger can have negative repercussions. Now, let's dive into our points for this podcast. Anger is a problem when it negatively affects others. Now, what do I mean by that? Anger drives people to act in a way. If you step on my shoes, I want to step on your shoes. If you talk to me a certain way, I'm going to return that same energy to you. You know, that, that's the case that we, we hear so often. You know, I liken it to the fact of the parent who says, well, if they hit you, you make sure you hit them back. Well, you know, when it comes to anger, who decides and... Who, who decides exactly how far should I go? If we are not examining ourselves, if we are not putting ourselves in a position where we can check ourselves, then we're going to have a problem when it comes to us being angry. Because again, if I don't check myself, if I put myself in a position where something has happened and I fly off the handle, well, you know what they say the problem is when a person flies off the handle is that you end up on the floor and then it's hard to fix things. Sometimes our anger can cause us to damage relationships. And as one who seeks to keep their mental health together, 
We need relationships with one another. If I'm the angry person all the time, people don't want to be around people who are negative and who are angry and who have the mindset that nothing is ever good. I know I don't want to be around anybody like that all the time. It would be draining to me. So when it comes to anger, our anger can negatively affect other people. It can drive people away. It can make people, it can make us do unpleasant or harmful things to ourselves and also to others. That's one of the things that we're going to talk about today. The the anger iceberg is how I, I labeled it. If we think about how an iceberg looks, you know, there's something on top. And when, once that iceberg is coming, but there's even more of it below. And we're going to talk about that in a, in a brief moment. But I want to set the stage here because it's important that we realize how I behave, how I act, the way that I put my emotions out there, the way that I deal with myself is very important to maintaining relationships. I think about it from the standpoint of James chapter 1 and verse 19. I, I, I love to look at that verse. Let every one of us be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Again, being slow to wrath because of we realize that we want to preserve relationships and we don't want to harm people. And so when my anger gets to that point, when I lose control, when it becomes un, when my anger is so unhealthy that it has caused me things, I have to step back and look at myself. What's the next one? Anger is a big problem when it hinders my my work or it hinders me from doing the things that I normally like to do. There was a a young man who I was doing therapy with um, maybe sometime last year, and he was in foster care because, as I told you on the first the first episode of the podcast, I work in foster in the foster care system. I do therapy with children from ages six all the way up to 18. And so this young man had got his second job. And one of the things that the young man and I were working on, we were always working on positive peer association because he was a kid who came from a very impoverished area. Um, he didn't have any good, any good support, any good moral support. Everything that he knew, he came from the streets. Everything that he learned from his mother, his father, guess what? It was, the, it was what they had been taught. He was one who was full of anger. He was full of rage constantly. If you say the wrong thing to him, he would quickly fly off the handle. If you complimented him, he didn't want to be complimented because he felt like somebody was trying to get him. They were, they were trying to misuse him. They were trying to do something to get the upper hand on him. So a nice gesture was not a healthy thing in his mind because he always felt like somebody wanted to take something from him. And so he figured that if I'm angry all the time, nobody will mess with me. I have to be the bully. I have to be the big guy. I have to establish my dominance before anything. And so he, I helped him get a second job. Uh, he lost his first job, not due to a situation of his own, but he was in a position where he had to move. And so he was able to get a second job. Two weeks in, next thing you know, he's fired. Hey, what happened? Well, I'm not going to let anybody talk to me any kind of way. And because if, if they tell me what to do, I'm not going to listen to them because I'm my own man. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. And he was so angry. I could just, I could just see it in his face. His, his, he looked like he dissociated for a moment because he was just so engulfed in rage. That's that blind rage that you hear a lot of people talk about. That's that anger that causes so many problems. This young man was willing to throw away his job the way that he was making money to save up to, to go to school, to help take care of his little sister when he will, will be able to see her, those things like that. So it, anger should never get us to the point where we are willing to lose the things that we need or we hurt relationships or we're not able to work like we're supposed to and take care of ourselves. If that's something that you are experiencing, it's something that it needs to be checked. Because again, there's okay to be angry but we can't sin. We can't take it to that next level. We can't let our anger get to the point where it keeps us from being just a good, a good human being, a good person who is on this earth. So if anger gets us to a point where we are losing, we are losing things like that, is it really worth it? 
is is it is it worth it for me to have that last word to give that boss a piece of my mind to tell them everything that I want to tell them or to tell that person everything you want to say to them because you have to get that last word because you are so furious about what's going on in your life. We have to seek the good ways to deal with our anger. And that's something we're going to talk about as we progress a little bit, a little bit further, but let's look at our next one of when anger is a problem. Anger is a problem when it negatively affects our well-being or our health. Now, that's a big one. You may think that, well, me being a little angry, it's not going to cause me to have cause anything to happen to me physically. Well, do you know that anger is directly related to our blood pressure? When we become angry or once one gets into a fight or flight uh, mode or angry, our body releases cortisol. And what cortisol does is it's the it's like the adrenaline. And once we once it gets us to going like that and we get and we're so angry and you see people become so agitated and their adrenaline is going real, real strong. If you stay in that mode all the time, it's detrimental to your body. That's why you see people who say, it, you know, it doesn't cost it doesn't take much to smile or it's you you use less or you burn more calories or you you use less muscles when you smile. I can't think of which one it is, and I forgive me if I'm wrong. I may have to look that up again, but that's the beauty about being able to do this podcast. If I'm wrong, please let me know. I'll correct myself next time. But when we think about anger and, our, and as related to our health, if I, w- I want to live a, a life that is, that is not so stressful that I'm, 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 I have to be angry about everything. But could you imagine having to be on blood pressure pills because of your anger because you are in a rage all the time because of something that may have went wrong in the past or something that you may not be able to do, but to be able to be in that situation, to let anger affect you that way, that it affects you mentally and physically. That's a bad thing. I wanted to make sure that I, that I add this part in another, 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 another tidbit I want to share. The writer made a statement. Physically, anger contributes to problems such as high blood pressure and heart attacks. Emotional anger contributes to anxiety, depression, drug use, and alcohol use. When it comes to anger, you see a lot of times when people say, well, I need to calm myself down. What do you hear them say? Well, I'll go and have a stiff drink, or I may go out and smoke a cigarette, or I may go out and smoke drugs. That You know, that people result to those type of things. They result to those type of things to try to bring themselves down. Remember, no maladaptive behavior should be the excuse in trying to get yourself to come back down. When I say maladaptive, I mean bad behaviors like that. A person who is so angry that they feel like I got to go get a bottle of whiskey just to calm down is not the mindset that one should have. And so when it comes to anger being able to affect me physically and mentally, I have to watch myself when it comes to my anger. Is it really worth it is what I have to ask myself at the end of the day. Is it worth it? Can I let somebody have power over me like that, that they can affect my whole day, that they can affect my whole life? So I have to ask myself again, is it worth it? How much am I willing to take? How much am I willing to do? Again, anxiety, depression, physical illnesses, a person who overdrinks themselves, can have liver problems, anything like that. So is it worth it? If it's not, we have to make the necessary change. If it's not, we need to be people who say, hey, I want to do better and I need to change. Now let's look at our last one when when anger is a problem. Anger is a problem when it is too intense. Again, intense anger is anger that will take you too far and can sometimes put you in a situation where you can physically abuse someone or you can verbally abuse somebody and it can become mental. Abuse is abuse. And I think that we we need to realize those things that when we're angry, we can become very abusive in our language or we can become very abusive physically. I hope and pray that there's no one who is who is being physically abused by somebody, whether it be 
a spouse or a child that if if it's getting to that point that the only way that you can get through to a person is to physically put your hands on them that's your your anger has gotten too far whatever happened to communication whatever happened to letting things slide that don't matter whatever happened to trying to improve the relationships so when it comes to anger when it is overly intense, when things have gotten out of control, we need to examine ourselves. The statement that I put here, even when anger is justified, it can be a problem if it goes too far. For example, physical aggression can lead to several consequences such as physical harm to oneself or others, property damage, and also legal trouble. A verbal outburst that's out of proportion to a situation may lead to losing a job, permanently damaging a relationship or other consequences. Now, that's big. There, if we look at the rate of domestic violence in our country today, well, you know, here in Tennessee where we are, you know, it's it's a very high rate. We have a lot of people who cohabitate where in and where I'm from, they say shacking. They come together and they stay and then we see a lot of those relationships have domestic violence problems because one becomes angry with the other, and next thing you know, a person is putting hands on somebody. Now, notice I'm not saying a man does it or a woman does it because domestic violence can be done through either either person, either male or female. It can, it can happen that a person gets so upset that the only thing that I can do now is put hands on you because I'm that angry. Friends, when it gets to that point, when, it, when anger is that severe, you need to walk away. You need, you need to walk away. And again, we're going to discuss some of the things that we can do when we're angry to help bring ourselves back down. So just looking at, the, at those short points for a moment of how, when it comes to anger, how bad it is. Again, it's, it's good when it's justified to be able to do something. But when it goes to the point where it's so far that one can lose their relationships, their jobs, their, their health. That whether it be physically or, or physical health or their mental health, when all those things go out, we've let anger drive us too far. I think about the fact that one of the things I said is about, about property damage. You know, there are so many kids who I have done therapy with and some adults, but I'm going to speak about it from the kid point first. There are so many kids who I've con- have been in contact with in foster care, where if you go by a foster parent's house and you will see a hole in the wall. Well, what happened? Well, she got mad about something and she did this. Or he, he got mad about something and he did this. Suicide rates have increased drastically because of people who are angry. We see children and adults who self-harm, maybe cutting of the arms, cutting of the legs, are doing things like that. Other maladaptive behaviors, overdosing on opioids, taking drugs, all those things because they're angry at the world. Because they're angry at what happened to them in their past. And this is a beautiful segue for me to move over to the next point for us to talk about the anger iceberg that I wanted to say. You know, I I briefly mentioned it earlier about about an iceberg, about there's the iceberg that you see up up top. But, you know, there's more that's under the water that you don't see. And when it comes to anger, that's how anger is. Why do so many people get angry or what happens that causes a person to be so angry? Well, there are a few things that are, that are listed here on, on this particular handout that I wanted to point out. When it comes to anger, there can be many underlying conditions. Some people are angry because of the sadness that they're facing. There are some things that have happened in life that have just gotten them to the point where they can't believe that they're going through certain things and they can't believe that they've had to experience the things that they've experienced. And so they're sad. And then that sadness turns to anger once somebody is picking on them or once they see a situation doesn't go the way that they want it to go. Sometimes the underlying condition is disappointment. Disappointment, you know, a person may, may lose a job or may not be able to complete a job on time or, or complete a task, and they, their boss is breathing down their neck, and they want to, they, they have so many things going on, whether it be home life or things that are going on at the job. And now they're, they're disappointed that they didn't get that promotion or they didn't get the job that they wanted. And so now they lash out could be loneliness or being overwhelmed, you know, over being lonely. I, I guess I should, I should start with being lonely. 
sometimes being lonely at not able to have that person they want to have that communication with or being around the friends they want to be with. You know, either one of those can can be a cause for anger or it can be being overwhelmed by life. Again, I know I have 9,765 things I have to do in a day and I probably don't get not not even uh, a, uh, an eighth of them done in a day. But you know what? I've learned to make checklists. I've learned to, to be able to check things off to help me with my my anxiety, my anxious moments or when I'm feeling overwhelmed. Now, free for nothing, de- dealing with anger. If we decide to do checklists, if we are people who are very detail oriented and we have time that we we want, we have so many things we want to do, but we may fail at them sometimes. Make you a checklist. I promise you, checking off those things will help to bring some of your anger down and some of that overwhelming, over the, those overwhelming feelings. And that's a free for nothing. We're going to get back to the anger part. Sometimes anger is due to being embarrassed or hurt, or it could be helplessness. I know I was just speaking with my supervisor, and we were talking about a lot of the children who we come into contact with in foster care who have anger issues. A lot of it is due to being helpless and hopeless. These things happened to me as a kid and I can't see anything getting better. Or sometimes it happened as an adult when we, when we go through life and have those traumas that are untreated, we lash out because that's all that we know. We want to protect ourselves. That anger becomes a protective coping mechanism instead of what it needs to be in order for us to just truly survive. Watch the anger. You don't have to be helpless. You don't have to be hopeless. And because you may be in a situation that that you may feel like you're helpless and hopeless, we can get out of those things. Sometimes anger comes from pain and frustration. Sometimes it comes from insecurity. Sometimes it even comes from being hungry or not even having the, the basic things of life, food, shelter, and clothing. Now, if you hear me mention a lot about like, like the work I do, because again, I, I speak about the population that I see about the um the foster care system and some of the situations that kids have been through. You know, physically physical abuse due to anger is one of the main reasons here in Tennessee. I'm not gonna say it's every in, in every case, but here in Tennessee is one of the main reasons that children come into foster care because of physical abuse that stems from anger. It's sad. And again, we have to be people who are watchful. We are people who are noticing noticing these things. You know, me myself, if I see something like that, I'm a man, I'm what you call a mandated reporter for the state of Tennessee. So I have to report anything. If there's a form of abuse that I that I feel that is going on, I have to report it because that's that's a part of my job. Some people have anger due to grief, anxiety, stress, um, due to even being threatened. Any of these things can be part of that iceberg, but you know what a, what, what a part of the iceberg they are? The things that you can't see. And so we have to be kind to people, be empathetic with people, be compassionate with people because we never know what people are going through. I know where I stay at. I always, and it, this is probably going to speak more to the side of me that I shouldn't eat KFC so much, but every time I go to KFC where I stay at, I will always, I'm nice. I'm Well, I'm nice everywhere I go. I'm especially nice to people who are going to fix my food because I want to make sure that I don't get anything special in my food when I do it, when I, when I, if I'm being rude to them. So, and I'm all, I'm, I'm extra nice when I place my order. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. And the last time I went, the lady was like, you know what? I was having a bad day, but you, you, you know, I, I was mad. I was she, she didn't go into her, what her problem was, but she said she was mad. But me being nice to her made her or me being respectful and ordering and saying, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, please. And just using manners. You know what? It was able I was able to deescalate her and calm her down. Because, again, we don't know what people are going through when they have their their anger issues. But again, you can see that they're mad, but you don't know exactly why. So. It is good for us to make sure that we examine ourselves so that when somebody may even respond to us in a way that is not the way we want to, that we can take the time, process it, and maybe talk back with them. Because again, when it comes to anger, you don't know exactly what's going on. 
two things I want to share as we as we finish up with Anger 101 Part 1. Again, this is, this is going to be a few episodes on anger because there, there's a lot to say about it that we can't just, I, I, I don't want to cram it into just one episode, but just to, to get us started and get the gears turning in our heads because there are some more that we're going to talk about with anger when it comes to relationships and how the cycle of anger goes and what the, the anger, cycle, anger cycle, can, cycle can lead to. Got a little tongue tied that the anger cycle can lead to. But then I'm not going to just give you all the problems. We're going to look at some of the ways that we can help to manage our anger and the coping skills that we can use also. So I want to share these last things with you, and I want them to resonate with, with us all. Made a note to say anger is an emotion that tends to be easy to see. However, anger is often just the tip of the iceberg. Other emotions may be hidden beneath the surface. In some families, anger is seen as more acceptable than other emotions. A person might express anger in order to mask emotions that cause them to feel vulnerable, such as hurt or shame. There are many people who hide behind hurt and shame. You think about a lot of the movies we watch, and you see a bully. You see a bully, they go to school, and they're bullying kids, and they're picking on people. What's, what's normally that bully's backstory? Where there's something that's going on at home that's making that bully to he's not he he or she wants to have that power and control they can't have it at home because of something's being done to them so they take their anger out on somebody at school you know friends i'm here to tell you this it's not just in the movies that's how it happens in real life those are things that can, that that plague our children that plague our youth and it's something that we need to talk about something that we need to bring to the table anger triggers our people Places, situations, again, things that, that, predict, that trigger anger, people, places, or situations, and things that set off anger. Your triggers can provide clues about the emotions behind your anger. And that's something that I want, to, want us to look at a little further as we continue. Anger may be fueled by different emotions at different times or by a combination of emotions. Sometimes, however, anger is just anger. And... That's something that we will continue to process as we go through these episodes. So I hope that as we speak about anger, that it, if you're having these things, that you can examine yourself and make the necessary steps. So I want you to tune in next time and we'll discuss the cycle. <laughs>